Hey guys, it's Matha here once again, showing off a build that I haven't really touched since it first came out, and that is Toxic Rain. When it first came out uh, with Scourge Arrow at the same time, I made a Pathfinder that tried to specialize in both the damage over time and the poison effect for Toxic Rain, and it kind of just felt like it didn't specialize in either, and the damage really did drop off in the end game. This time around, it's a raider for basically as much attack speed, movement speed as possible, uh, with the frenzies and the onslaught buff, and then specializing entirely into the damage over time. And you can also see that I'm using skitterbots to activate impulsor explosion, because uh, without an explosion, toxic range just feels a little lackluster, at least uh, aesthetically and just to play. But the damage is still there, and ultimately, impulse is basically just making things a little safer for corpse explosion not really helping with clear but overall i can say that toxic rain in its current form uh, when scaled for damage over time is a really juicy skill uh, for end game farm it's just buttery smooth it can do everything really well this is an uber at siri that was just an absolute joke uh, uber elders are really easy especially with mirage archer uh, you can do your deepest delves, at least my deepest delves of 650 or some shit like that. And then T16 maps, you can just roll whatever the hell you want without really even looking at mods um, on the maps themselves and then just speed run them quite comfortably. All of the guardians are going to die easily. The DPS is pretty insane when ramped. And as well as that, you've got a lot of movement speed and a lot of evasion and dodge. So it becomes a pretty overall well-rounded character and uh, something that uh, is a bit of a shame that I haven't touched until now. Now, it is a raider and that might not necessarily be the right choice. I'd say if you're going for probably the most well-defined, well-rounded um Toxic Rain, it might possibly still be Trickster, but I felt like that was just a little too meta and uh, wanted to try out something in the Raider category, or you could definitely go like a Pathfinder, you could still do an Occultist, but you wouldn't have anywhere near as fast move and clear, but it's pretty flexible and I think it can be used as kind of a starter, though by the end of this character I did try my best to fine tune it a little, and I've got a bow with, let's say, vicious projectiles and a plus one gem on it, though you could just multi-mod vicious projectiles for a very similar outcome in any case. Uh, there's really not too much else to mention here. You guys basically know what Toxic Rain is. You run around, you move fast, you right-click, the pods get thrown out. There's a damage over time component to the initial hit. There's a damage over time component uh, for the explosion of the pods. And you can pre-fire a lot of time with your damage, especially thanks to the new and fancy uh, Mana Flask. Enduring Mana Flask, I do believe, saves this build quite heftily uh, in the mana department because now you can actually properly spam uh, at the 50 mana cost or whatever toxic rain is for as much as you want without really ever losing out on mana and as well as that you can pre-fire bosses very easily so the build just has come a long way I think in terms of smoothness since the very first time I played Toxic Rain. And I'd say one of the only other really important things I can mention is that it does have a spare six link or um, well, chest setup, so there's a good five or six link that you can utilize there, which I didn't really know what to do with because uh, there's just not much else you can really chuck into the build. So I end up putting a caustic arrow uh, five link, which is an additional single target helper. So basically, whenever I need to for rares or uh, bosses, you'll chuck down a caustic arrow for four seconds, which I think is the duration of the caustic arrow, and then that will uh, last four seconds while you go ahead and spam with your toxic rain. And the caustic arrow is not anything to sneeze at, it's got a couple of hundred thousand DPS by itself, just for the one button press, so it certainly does help a little bit. And then you can see just the huge power and utility of toxic rain's slow effect, that uh, once you're out there spamming, the bosses just get locked down so hard and a lot of them will try and finish off their action uh, before they do anything else and if you slow it down that just means they're going to be stuck in that one action for quite a while so it's a very potent boss killing ability and uh, very defensive or as offensive as you like. So the damage is there, the playstyle is there, and overall it's just a really solid build so I do want to get into what the character looks like and how I've built it thus far.
So here is our basically completed character, uh, level 93 raider called Quinn's Chat Rain, Toxic Rain, etc. And it is based around the Toxic Rain gem, which you can see here is currently level 28, uh, has a damage over time uh, initial hit, which is then exploded there with these pods as well. So you can see that's what it looks like with the um, microtransaction, which is basically the entire reason I decided to do the build. And you can see that it's a 49 mana cost with our current mana there. So it's really bad if you don't use your mana flask, but if you use your mana flask, you can spam indefinitely. So a enduring mana flask uh, for this type of build really does change the way you play quite comfortably. And I do highly recommend using a mana flask for your sustain. Uh, the bow we have is, as I mentioned, a Vicious Projectiles plus one socketed gem bow. Uh, so it's just two mods and then multi-modded. And it might look kind of impressive, but the plus one really isn't necessary at all because uh, just multi-modding a uh, level 20 Vicious Projectiles, which is extremely easy, uh, will net you almost the exact same damage because you replace the plus one socketed gems with a uh, different craft. Instead, you'll go for... Um, chaos damage over time multiplier which goes up to 40 and it's almost the same damage as a plus one level uh, mod so you basically just multi-mod around one mod and that's still going to be your end game bow that said making one like this isn't all that hard uh, i did make put about two three thousand alterations into these things and i made a few little vicious projectile bows uh, you just got to make sure you're regaling lots and trying to go for some outcomes but honestly just a vicious proj one is totally fine because after that you then have still a six link left over for toxic rain uh, mirage archer swift affliction empower level four which is a level seven in this instance with my current bow uh, efficacy and avoid manipulation so without an empower there really isn't too much else to add as far as a dps slot is concerned you can use conk effect but that will uh, prevent some of the overlap of the explosions onto your enemies but it might not matter in some cases so that's kind of up to you guys if you want to try out some conk effect and see if it works any nicer but this is the current setup i've gone with and even an empower level three should be pretty damn handy in a bow like this so you don't necessarily have to go for a level four uh, so that's basically it you're uh, building it just off of gem levels and damage over time and chaos damage over time multiplier so with the way that the raider works though we've just gone for uh, frenzies so that you get more damage from those but then the rest of the tree or the rest of the ascendancy is just giving you a shitload of attack speed so you can stack up pods as many and as quickly as possible whereas let's say a trickster or an occultist will probably hit harder but attack less fast so that's the way i've managed to build this character and then you've also uh, gonna try and go out of your way for uh, skill effect duration which will affect the pod uh, damage over time as you can see here we have a uh, skill effect duration of 2.26 even though the default is one second and that's going to affect your damage over time as a pure uh, large multiplier for damage there uh, besides that we're getting all the frenzies and just a pretty whatever damage over time passive tree i think uh, we haven't focused at all on poison and i've also picked up um, acro phase acro and then just some good attack speed and all of that so um, we've also got the Mana Flask uh, sustain over here. And then jewels aren't that good for the build, but they're certainly not bad if you can get the right ones. So attack speed and a bit of damage, or maybe some life and attack speed and damage is good too. Uh, the gear itself though, pretty straightforward. Just trying to get life minus chaos on your helm. I did get summoned skitterbots have 90% increased area of effect just for more reliable impulsor explosioning. Um, crafted some gloves with chaos damage over time, multi, uh, belt, just regular belt, resists, reduced flask charges used, resists, uh, some uh, movement speed, chaos damage over time, multi on a necklace, bunch of int, which helps us use all of our int gems. Um, rings are just strong on life, maybe a bit of resist. I did initially get some life gain on hit for each um, enemy hit by your attacks, and I got up to 30 between two rings, but honestly, I didn't really notice it as any form of sustain from this shit, so I got rid of the other ring and uh, just went more defensive. And then a 
quiver is basically just a shield here uh, it has life resists it's really just a lot of defensive gear most of your damage is going to be coming from the six link uh, gem levels and passives from the uh, tree we then have spell totem and multi totem attached to faster casting and wither and that is going to be a huge multiplier for you if you place it correctly uh, against bosses and enemies it will uh, stack with it quite profusely given our duration from the build as well uh, over here we have enlighten skitterbots malevolence and withering step doesn't have to be attached there but it's just sitting there anyway and uh our malevolence also grants us 20 percent damage over time multiplier so if you can get that watcher's eye it will help quite a bit too and then whatever here just life resists uh, blood rage blink arrow dash and summon stone golem and then our caustic arrow setup which is very similar to the uh, toxic rain setup you're just going for caustic arrow uh, vicious proj void manipulation efficacy and conch effect conch effect doesn't really matter um, in reducing your radius because you just drop it at the uh, foot of a single enemy like a boss or a rare you're not really trying to clear with it and you can see it does deal a pretty large amount of damage for 4.8 seconds so it helps to just place one of those and then go for your toxic rain spam and our attack speed isn't anything too impressive because it'll get really huge once you get your frenzies up and your onslaught up and at that point it becomes extremely fast and i do think the raider playstyle is actually pretty nice for this character uh, using a quartz as well as that and a witchfire brew and when i'm doing my deep delving i put on a basalt flask with some increased effect because uh, we don't want the cart to move too fast and it does move very fast uh, when you have all of this rate of movement speed otherwise uh, I think that's pretty much all I need to mention for the character there um, as far as the passive tree is concerned I think I would have gone slightly so I started the tree here and then went down here and then all the way up into the shadow area uh, there's quite a lot of travel to get to the skill effect duration it's probably some of the last stuff you do just because um, it doesn't feel that good for the build it's end game overall dps and something you'll notice is on the path of building dps is not very impressive this is uh, your dot damage here the main uh, the important um, number for the build 77,000 that's per pod and it's also not showing you the attack speed so let's say we have um, 80,000 dot dps let's say you throw out five pods um, you then also have the attack rate of five um, by five pods a second basically and skill effect duration doesn't increase the dot dps here either so let's say we have 10 million damage who the fuck cares it doesn't really matter it's just there for your own reference to know what to take and uh, what not to take and how your damage scales because getting an accurate number on this bastard is actually pretty tough so that's about it for the character this is the new supporter pack if you're wondering the grand sanctum and this is a ringmaster weapon uh, that looks like this but i hope you guys enjoyed the video and the toxic rain character thank you very much for watching and see you next time Wait, fuck, shit, fuck. I didn't start out with frenzies. A putrefy rot, spoil, and fester. I mean, we really don't need to start out with frenzies. DPS is gonna be giga huge either way, but I figured. I always want to start out with my best possible foot forward. We skipped the uh, explosion, so that's a good start. From um, Elder. Deeps are still good. I'm lagging, I think. That big FPS spike, I think, was a lag spike. So far, so good. Have not been touched. My mana is gone. Wait, what? Oh, I didn't press flask in a while. Yeah, it's kind of annoying being fully reliant on a mana flask, because you have to just press it if you ever want to do damage or attack. Milady. 
All right, let's shape it first. Herp. Excuse me, I haven't done this fight in a while. Oh god, slaps. Anything arguably worse than my most hipster build? You mean flame dash totems? Yeah, there's plenty of stuff that's worse. Flame dash totems wasn't even that bad. Dot deeps is thick. Slaps. Uh... That was incredibly smooth. Uh, Nihil Esme. Thanks for 17 months. <gasps> A map. Pretty good. Platinum Scepter. Not bad. However, this still worthless, still not anything. Yeah. Um that's whatever. A crypt armor, yeah, that's probably worthless. I think the map was the most expensive thing to drop. 